Perhaps the polar opposite of the conventional woman is the unconventional woman. She is seen as masculine, powerful, unemotional, independent, career-oriented, cynical, sarcastic, jaded, and intellectual. Dorothy on The Golden Girls and Miranda on Sex and the City are the epitome of this archetype. Dorothy is often depicted as masculine and unattractive due to her clothing and personal appearance. Her height and her deep voice also attribute to this characterization. Dorothy is the more intellectual of the four and finds interest in reading and other cultured pursuits. Her high intellect lends itself nicely to her quick-paced, sarcastic wit, but her cynicism can often cast her as a naysayer to her friends' pursuits. Like her Golden Girls predecessor, Miranda has a propensity for masculine dress and appearance along with behavior. She's extremely independent and does not like to be seen as needing a man. As a lawyer, Miranda is extremely career-oriented and often puts it above other pursuits, including boyfriends and later her husband. You will rarely see Miranda become emotional or cry, and she is seen as the more rational of the four. Because of this, she is often perceived as cynical. The nurturer appears as the more mothering archetype, although it is not necessary for her to actually be nurturing children or to be a mother. She is seen as caring, wise, reliable, other-oriented, nosy, judgmental, and also as an advisor. The mother in the Golden Girls is also considered the nurturing, mothering archetype. Sophia, Dorothy's mother, can often be seen cooking for the other women and also taking care of them in times of sickness. She uses her wisdom gained from life experience to help the other women in their pursuits and conflicts. However, she's often judgmental in doing so. Her advice is oftentimes unsolicited and Sophia tends to be nosy, but it's her dedication to unifying the four women that holds their non-traditional family together. Carrie's also the glue that holds the four women of Sex and the City together. Like Sophia, Carrie's also the one who takes care of her friends when they're sick or have had some type of tragedy in their lives. She is the one person all of them can count on to be there and to care for them in their time of need. For example, Carrie's the one that is called when Miranda has her baby, when Charlotte loses hers, and when Samantha gets sick. The femme fatale is the contradictory counterpart to the nurturer. She is vain, sexualized, outgoing, sociable, self-assured, self-absorbed, hyper-conscious of appearance, and takes pride in her sexual conquest. On The Golden Girls, Blanche plays the role of the femme fatale, while Samantha is the femme fatale in Sex and the City. One of Blanche's favorite topics of discussion is herself. She's extremely vain and concerned with her own appearance. She constantly lies about both her age and weight, and neither are actually revealed in the series. She takes extreme pride in being the object of men's desires, and is hypersexual and frankly, a little kinky. Blanche is extremely self-absorbed. During any major crisis, her utmost concern is how the situation will affect her. Although she's self-centered, she's a lot of fun to be around. She's extremely social and is often the life of the party. Despite being the oldest of the four women, Samantha is the party girl. Like Blanche, she is often the life of the party and is extremely social. This is seen through her career choice as a PR agent, which provides her the opportunity to attend many high-class social events. Samantha prides herself in being connected to others. Along with her career connections, Samantha also prides herself in her sexual connections, which are numerous. She's not known for being in a stable relationship and considers herself a trisexual. She'll try anything once. So, you may be wondering, how is this all relevant? According to the Encyclopedia of Women and Gender, American children watch three to four hours of television each day and will have spent more hours with the media than in school by the time they're 18. Watching television in such formative years has been proven to affect the way people view gender in our society. Many theories have tried to explain how it is that media consumption affects our views of the world. Such theories include the Drench Hypothesis, Gender Schema Theory, and the Cultivation Theory. The latter, proposed by George Gerbner and his colleagues, is one of the more widely respected theories. According to the Encyclopedia of Women and Gender, the cultivation theory proposes that television's consistent yet restricted images and portrayals construct a specific portrait of reality, and as viewers watch more and more television, they gradually come to cultivate or adopt beliefs about the world that coincide with this portrayal. 
This idea has been proven through many different studies, which suggest that moderate links do in fact exist between gender stereotyping and television exposure. Studies show that heavier television viewing habits increase sexism, ideas of what roles and behaviors different genders should participate in, gender stereotyping, and even has shown to affect our own gender-related preferences and behaviors. For example, those who are heavier viewers of television tend to have a higher preference towards traditional activities and occupations according to gender. And it has even been shown that not only do people have these preferences, but that television viewing can actually increase gendered behavior. Because of this, it is important to offer a multitude of possibilities to television viewers in terms of women's roles and occupations, because if we don't, it seems that we are limiting women.